From cheating politicians to surly receptionists, this sketch show satirised every aspect of British society. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 Little Britain sketches. Martin, it's Linda. I've got the whole cast of Fraggle Rock here. <laughs> They're not happy. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're counting down the most memorable and outrageous moments from the original UK version of this award-winning BBC comedy, which means no USA spin-off, and it's one entry per character only. The flash isn't. Number 10, Ray McCooney. This eccentric hotel owner lives in a far out fancy world where sprites inhabit radios and taxes are paid for with magic beans. You'd like to know my secrets, would ya? <laughs> As such, he flat out refuses to give a simple answer to a simple question because life's never that straightforward, obviously. What do you mean? Yes, there are nuts, or yes, you know. Yes! Armed with a piccolo and an over-enthusiastic tone of voice, he's ready with a riddle at a moment's notice, leaving his customers understandably confused. Does that answer your question? <laughs> Number 9. Settling the Account For Bubbles de Vere, the Hillgrange Health Spa is her own permanent holiday resort, but her freeloading flamboyance comes to a head here, where the spa manager tries to settle her sizable bill. Yeah, it's really just about this payment situation. You've been with us for over five months now. We still haven't received anything. Oh, that's terrible, terrible, darling. Unperturbed, Devere shamelessly continues to outstay her welcome, using the facilities as if she owns them. Hello, Gita. My turn now, darling. And when the manager refuses to be blatantly fobbed off, Bubbles truly turns on the charm. I'm sure we can come to some sort of arrangement. Number 8. The Fussy Shopper The softly spoken Mr. Man has a very particular taste in almost everything he buys, making him a nightmare for Matt Lucas's humble shopkeeper. I was just wondering if you had any books on medieval English music between the dates 1356 and 1390. <laughs> but the well-prepared proprietor always tries his best, with more than a little help from the never-seen but often-heard Margaret. There should be one over by the Mike Gatting autobiography. Oh yes, here we are. History of medieval music, 1356 to 1390. So, with Mr. Man browsing for books, the shop owner surprises him by having exactly what he needs. The rest of the transaction isn't quite successful, though. You, uh, you must really like reading. Oh no, unfortunately I'm blind. <laughs> Number seven, sing the theme tune. A recurring character, Dennis Waterman is a direct, if slightly strange, parody of the actual actor and singer. Hello! <laughs> Danny! Played by David Walliams, he's extremely small and exceptionally timid, reporting to his agent in the hope of landing a dream role, as long as he can, well, you know. So they want me to star in it, write the theme tune, sing the theme tune? No, I, I think they just want you to be in it this time. A joke that's rooted in the real-life Waterman's apparent tendency to sing his own title tunes, the actor was reportedly unimpressed by the caricature at first. I'm running much too fast, can't escape from the past, I'll be so good for lucky runnings. <laughs> but he still appeared as a special guest for Little Britain Live. Number 6, Careless Whisper. This one really was a long time coming. For an ongoing sketch, Sebastian Love aids the Prime Minister, all the while harbouring an almighty crush on his boss. Sebastian, thank you so much. You know I couldn't have done it without you. And as the PM puts on a party to celebrate another election win, the stars seem to finally align for him and his assistants. With George Michael on the speakers and a slow dance on the cards, Sebastian makes his move. But the moment doesn't quite play out how he planned it. Do you perhaps have the, the slightest crush on me? <laughs> Why the heck you that idea? No, no, no. I, I just wanted to say well done. Oh, well, thank you, thank you. Number five, Vanessa Feltz. As a leading Little Britain character, Marjorie Dawes does not mince her words. Next time you feel peckish, have a bit of dust. Yeah? <laughs> 
She heads a local fat fighters club and spends most of her time insulting the members and delivering absurd dieting tips. But when Vanessa Feltz hosts a Q&A, Marjorie cuts a conflicted soul. Well, I think it is. Yeah, I do. Make me laugh. Vanessa may be big, but you are something else. She flits between flattering her guests and trying to humiliate her, always believing she's one step ahead. Until the tension overflows in outrageous fashion. Yes, I've got a question for you, Vanessa Feltz. <laughs> Number four, computer says no. Setting new standards for poor customer service, Carol B is also responsible for one of the most successful sketch show slogans of all time. Computer says no. <laughs> An unhelpful employee extraordinaire, for the show's third series she works in a travel agent, routinely ruining holidays for every single customer. I want to meet Mickey Mouse. Just be a man in a suit, but <laughs> that's what you want. <laughs> With an infectious lack of enthusiasm, she quickly curtails this family's excitement by turning their Disney dream into a dreary nightmare. And when the other options seem bleak, does Carol let them down gently? Nope. No, she doesn't. Excellent for families. Really great for the little ones, yeah. Oh, that is perfect. Computer says no. <laughs> <coughs> Number three, Davis Thomas. Another instantly recognizable character, Matt Lucas's Davith Thomas, staunchly believes he's the only homosexual around, despite the ongoing and increasingly obvious evidence that he clearly isn't. Don't you know I'm the only gay in this village? Oh, I just dream of the day I can meet other gays who know what it's like to be a gay. <laughs> but while Davith shows off his sexuality whenever he can, he never actually acts upon it. I'm a gay. I don't think so. No, I bloody am, you know. And though he claims he wants to meet other gay people, he's far from friendly in this introductory scene. This village just isn't big enough for the both of them. Well, maybe I should go. Yes, maybe you should. We've already got one gay in Tlandui Breffy. We don't need another one. <laughs> Number two, the dance-off. Teenage delinquent Vicky Pollard is never far from trouble. And whether she's breaking the law by stealing from a supermarket or trading her baby for a Westlife CD, she's got an answer for everything. Vicky... Where is the baby? Swapped it for a Westlobe CD. <laughs> Turning mid noughties chav culture into an inescapable catchphrase, in this sketch she encounters a rival group of girls on her estate, and the two gangs find an unusual way to settle their differences. But Vicky definitely wins, yeah? But no, but... <laughs> we as well the best dancers. Number one, Andy makes a splash. Today's winners are arguably the best known faces from the show, and we all know the drill. Well, that is pride and prejudice. Yeah, no. Lou looks after Andy, who pretends to need a wheelchair, but leaves it to perform a series of surprising actions whenever Lou's back is turned. Oi! Oi, Davros! He's still here, isn't he? That's why I like You can't do anything in respect on your life. Throw in a few memorable one liners, and you have a firm fan favourite. Even Matt Lucas has said he liked playing Andy Pipkin more than most characters. Their shenanigans at the swimming pool are amongst their most famous. What a kerfuffle. But he does have a slight fear of water. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo UK and subscribe for more great content.